Joe? Mm -hmm. There's always something new to learn, and in Rogue Kitchen, we learn by playing with our food. It's Rogue Kitchen Live! In the HLC! In the HLC! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For those of us, or excuse me, for those of you who have joined us before, you'll notice, you'll notice we have a different background today. It's not my home kitchen. We are home. We are in our hospitality learning center home. And today, <clears throat> we are going to be doing three ingredient mac and cheese. That's right, three ingredients. We're going to be using a liquid. You can use milk, but today we're going to be using a, a chicken stock. And then we're going to be using a sodium citrate. We'll get to that in just a second, and we'll explain a little bit more about that. And then we have shredded cheddar cheese, okay? So we'll stir all that together, make a really creamy sauce. We'll add it to our, our cooked pasta. And then what Jimmy and I are going to do, standing our six feet apart, is we are going to look at, or more like we're, we're gonna be making variations uh, of our macaroni and cheese using some leftover ingredients that we have in our refrigerator. So it's kind of a common theme from last week. We used some leftover ingredients from 4th of July. And today, uh, we're going to continue that theme. Uh, you know, people, I think, are always looking for ideas to, you know, to utilize uh, leftover products in the refrigerator. And so today, we are going to, to do that. We've got several different ingredients. We'll go over those here in just a little bit. Um, but then we can make, uh, we'll, we'll make our variations uh, um, of our macaroni and cheese. So in essence, we're having a macaroni and cheese bar. So instead of like a baked potato bar, we're having a mac and cheese bar. So that should be a lot of fun, all right? Okay, <clears throat> so uh, Jimmy, anything you want to add? You can just jump right in. Um, so I was just going to say, you know, it's kind of fun, uh, this cheese sauce recipe. You can use it for mac and cheese, you can use it for potatoes au gratin, you can use it for, um, in my household we do roasted cauliflower and then we put this cheese sauce over it. Um, it there's just so many different things you can do with it and it's so easy. The key ingredient is just that sodium citrate. So as long as you have that sodium citrate, well and cheese, um, but you can use sodium citrate, the cheese, and any liquid. So you can use milk, you could use um, like you said, uh, the chicken stock that we're using today. Yeah. I've used beer. I've used um, just straight water sometimes if I want just a straight cheese flavor. Um, and sometimes you can, um, I mean, it's just really just whatever you have in the fridge, whatever you can make work, and then whatever cheese you have. Um, we're going to use cheddar today because that's what we had in the fridge downstairs in the freezer. Um, and we're using the chicken stock because we didn't have any milk on site here at the HLC. So again, you know, just things that like, Keep cheese in your freezer. If you go have cheese in your drawer all the time, use whatever liquid and sodium citrate is shelf stable forever. Um, so really cool. And then we can do all these different variations. Um, and like you said, we're just using up. These are legitimately leftovers and jars of stuff from our fridges. So um, it'll be kind of cool, kind of fun. And yeah, so pretty good. Let's get going with this sauce. Okay. So uh, first thing you want to do is you want to bring your your liquid up to um, temperature hot enough that uh, that you can dissolve your sodium citrate here, okay? So if you're using a milk, um, you want to bring it up, or you want, you want to scald your milk, and scalding means you just bring it up hot enough to where it's steaming. And of course you can see here, this chicken stock here um, is steaming very nicely. So I'm just going to you know, sprinkle this stuff in a little bit while I'm and stirring at the same time. The stuff really won't clump, clump up on you, but um, definitely a good idea anytime, anytime you add any kind of powder to your liquid. You definitely want to uh, make sure that that's stirred around there. So, And uh, you know, you could always add like a bay leaf to this. You could add a sprig of thyme. Um, you know, if you wanted to throw in some chopped garlic in here, uh, you could definitely do that. You could even saute some onions and then pour your pour your liquid on top of there. Uh, or pour, excuse me, pour your liquid on there. And um, uh, flavor up your sauce that way, all right? So we're gonna stir this up, or uh, turn this heat up just a little bit more, all right? And so we are using an induction burner here at the HLC, compared to a, a gas burner I usually use at home. Um, I actually really like the induction burner. I think these are, these are great. They heat up really fast, and they keep a nice hot uh, temperature. Sorry, folks, I hit the, uh, I hit the vent, 
There's the one thing I told you not to do. What Jimmy told me not to, make sure you don't hit the vent there. And what did I do? I hit the vent. I didn't even realize I did that. I am so sorry <laughs> about that. Man. All right. So, we just keep moving here. All right. So, sodium citrate. Um, you can buy this stuff uh, on Amazon. In fact, I'll show you the product that I bought. Well, that's just hanging out here for a second. Uh, this is the product I bought. It's one pound, and I bought this stuff for like seven dollars on um, on Amazon. I got it within about two days. Um, it's a great little product comes to you fairly fast. You can also buy it at like a savory spice shop or or um, you know any kind of any kind of spice store there. So um, haven't been able to really find it in a grocery store, um, but again, you know we do a lot of shopping on Amazon just as consumers in general. Um, so, so it's something to note too, and I've um, got it up on the camera here, it is gluten free. So mm -hmm. you know, this is a good way to make a cheese sauce without adding flour. Yeah, um, so, and then use a gluten free noodle or a vegetable of some sort. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so it's a, and it's a nice good alternative for the gluten free crowd too. Absolutely, and you know, t usually when you, when you make a cheese sauce, okay, so we're just going to add this straight in here, all right? So this is, whoop, a little too so this is going to look clumpy and a little separated, but what sodium citrate does is it, is it, it melts that cheese into your liquid and it gives you a nice emulsification, okay? So that will all come together here. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about that sodium citrate. It, yeah. Um, so what it does is it really just like kind of softens the cheese and it keeps the cheese from, the fat separating from the protein. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times when you just take straight up cheddar and you throw it into a pot and you start to melt it or if you microwave it or something, um, you end up getting, it separates and you have all that grease that comes off of it and then the proteins get firm and kind of hard and like turn back into just regular curds. Um, this helps kind of just soften those curds and keep everything emulsified together. Um, so you'll notice it, everything's kind of separated in here right now, but as it's starting to melt, it's just turning into a yellow sauce instead of um, just turning into Puffy, weird cheese. Cheese, yeah. <laughs> so usually when, and then, <clears throat> the, the benefit to using sodium citrate here is that, you know, if we were to make a, a regular cheese sauce, right, with, with butter, um, and then you add flour, and then you add milk to it, right? Um, so we're, we're essentially we're making a roux, and then we're adding, adding a dairy product to it, right? And that roux is what helps bind the the uh, cheese with with the milk okay so we're kind of we're, we're skipping that step okay we're we're skipping making making that roux and and again having that flour that gluten in there um, and we are just adding our cheese straight to our liquid and we're coming together really nicely here all right we'll just keep stirring it around until and it takes a little bit all right but and you'll see like some of the curds as they start to melt, it just turns into that liquid cheese sauce. And it will definitely thicken. It looks a little thin now, but it will definitely thicken. Let's do one more. Yeah, it might be, it might be good to... Yeah, and sometimes it's a little thin, you can add more cheese. Yep. So we had our right amount in there, but we'll get some more going in here. You can always add more, but you can't take away sometimes. So you definitely can. Uh, yeah. Now, if you go the other way, though. All right. Uh, put together here a little bit better. All right. So it looks like we are on MSU Denver Wi-Fi, and it's dropping out on us a little bit. So. Okay. It seems like it's pretty clear right now, but we just get a few dropouts. So pause with us when you get the pause and be sure to stick with us, we're still here. We're yeah, not going definitely. Anywhere. We're not going anywhere. All right. All right, does anybody have any questions about this cheese sauce? It's pretty quick, pretty easy. I know we're only 11 minutes in, but honestly, we're almost done with this part of the recipe and then we'll get to have fun with, uh, with our leftovers. With our leftovers, yeah. yeah. You know, this is something too, you could add Rotel to if you wanted to, or you know, like, 
You add some fresh chopped jalapenos to it, diced tomatoes, um, use it as a nice little uh, chip dip or something. So it's definitely a, a good thing to use. And the great thing about this too is that when you go to reheat it, it reheats very nicely. I found that actually if you add just a tiny bit of, of water to your pan and bring that up and then fold your cheese and your cold cheese sauce into that, it works out pretty well. So. Okay. There we go. Alright. So I'm going to pause for just one second here. I'm going to cut off one more last little chunk here and add just a tiny bit more into here. I'm trying to turn this heat down here. It's not turning down for some reason. Alright, hold on Jason. We're going to pause. We will be back in just one second. Okay, let's see here. Put that on. Okay. Whew. Technical sorry. difficulties. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, we should have counted for Wi-Fi connections here, and uh, we just plugged in, but we should be good to go. If I can get a thumbs up from people. Sarah Huntinger, thank you for joining us. Hey, Sarah. All right. Now we've got a little bit more cheese here to this guy, so we'll take this thing off the heat here. All right. Are we looking good? Just yeah. a little bit, and we like, almost... We almost have all of our cheese melted down in there, so. And like you said, it, it looks a little bit thin, but that's because you got so much heat on it. As it starts to cool, it'll stick to the uh, the noodles really well. Yeah, it'll definitely absorb. The noodles will definitely absorb some of it. And this, you know, if you wanted to bake this too, um, you know, put a nice little crumb on top or, or something, um, and then pop it in the oven and bake it for a little bit. You know, that'll, it'll definitely um, absorb in there too, and you'll have nice, creamy baked mac and cheese there, so, all right. All right, so for those of you who just joined us, let's do a little recap since we were kind of spotty on our uh, connection there. Yeah. So, again, this is a, a three-ingredient mac and cheese. 
um, or cheese sauce. The cheese sauce is three ingredients, uh, which is sodium citrate, which is a cheese, a melting cheese salt, uh, which a, basically keeps the cheese emulsified and keeps the fat from separating from the protein. Uh, so you have the sodium citrate, the cheese, and a liquid, and it can be water, chicken stock, milk, heavy cream, half and half, beer, beer, um, whatever you want. Uh, white wine is actually a good one. Oh, um, and good. actually, sodium citrate is in a uh, Sauv Blanc. There's, a, there's trace amounts of sodium citrate in a Sauv Blanc, which is actually what they use when they do fondue at a fondue restaurant. Oh, yeah. um, and so that's what helps the cheese. If you've ever been to a fondue restaurant, you notice that their uh, cheese doesn't separate and doesn't get that greasy layer. Um, that's because there's um, the melting salts in the wines that help keep everything find it together. Nice. So very good. All really right. cool. Really cool recipe. And once you make this cheese sauce, you can put it on noodles. You can put it on potatoes. You can put it on cauliflower. Like I said, I'm trying to think of anything else. Gluten free noodles. Yeah, um, you can squash, zucchini, anything you want to make cheesy. That's right. And put it on a lot of stuff. So, all right, so we are good to go here. All right. All right, looking good. I'm gonna switch to this one. Okay. So just make sure that we don't want any more of our lumps of cheese in there because once we pour it into the noodles, there we won't get that nice little. Our cheese won't won't melt anymore. So. All right. All right. So now we've got our we've got our pasta here. All right, we've got more over there in case we need to add some more. But what we're going to do is we're just going to add, we're going to make one big batch of cheese sauce here. Oh, look how nicely that pours. Oh, nice. That looks good. Wow. Look at that. See, I like that we can do this together because I can get in there. And there zoom. you go. We're still. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. Here, and we'll just fold this in. Oh yeah, look at that! Look how creamy that looks. If you remember what it looked like when we first started, it was, you know, it was a little watery, a little separated. Yep. Like I said, once it cools down a little bit, definitely. Yep. Starts thicken up a little bit. And you still got that nice stringy kind of melted cheese look to it. Man, that looks good, huh? Okay, we've got a nice coating on our pasta here. Okay. All right, now we're ready for the fun part. I think so. I All definitely right. think so. All right. So, let's set out, we'll set out some cups here. We've got our... Yeah, we've got our six feet over here. Yeah, that's um, it. Here. Set them down right there. Or I could toss them too, yeah, that would be go. fun. Um, so what have you got here? I have, so we got, oh, we got bacon, got bacon. Yeah. some corner post bacon, Yum. Um, some leftover cheese uh, dip from our 4th of July. We had our neighbors over and had some uh, organic red pepper Asiago cheese dip. Oh, cheese on cheese. I had some roasted garlic that oh, was uh, starting to go a little bit, so I made some uh, roasted garlic, um, or the garlic was starting to go, so I put it in a quart pot with some avocado oil and just let it go for a couple hours. Um, so we got some roasted garlic and I have some garlic oil at home now. Yeah, so you get two products out of that. You get roasted garlic and garlic oil. It's great. Yeah. Then while I was working the other day, my wife made a good uh, pork roast, a sirloin pork roast. Ooh, man. Again, corner post. And I got some kimchi. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do these two together. Woo! Man. And pulled pork and kimchi. And you go with some bacon and a little extra cheese. Oh, man. All right, here, why don't, why don't we switch spots and you can go Okay, here. so what I brought from home was, uh, got some breakfast sausage here, all right. Dice that guy up, we'll throw some of that in there. And then one of my favorite products, pre-made pesto. Man, this is a great product, I love it, it's amazing. And then, I like, I like, bigger cheeses like like a blue cheese you know or something with you know something with some pungency to it so I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, I'm gonna do some sausage and blue cheese in there all right 
um, and maybe some pesto on top, all right? But then one of my favorite, my most favorite combinations is mac and cheese and fried chilies and oil with peanuts. I love this stuff. It's spicy, um, but it has a great, great flavor. Um, and actually if you put uh, with the, the kimchi in the, uh, in the mac and cheese there with this on top, I mean, it's spicy, but you get that richness from the cheese. It kind of cuts it a little bit, but that is really delicious. Oh, and I've also, I've got some nice caramelized onions here too. So we'll see if we can't sneak that into, uh, into one of our combinations here, all right? So, Jimmy, you want to go first and yeah, well, I make one up there? I snuck around and grab my ingredients here. You can stay over there, take your cups, and oh, nice. put yours together over there. All right. All right. See, now, the downfall of being here, I don't remember where everything is. In my kitchen, I know where everything is. Yeah. <laughs> You got it for months, you kind of forget. All right, so I'm gonna go with a couple variations, like I said. And we're doing these in cups because, you know, I mean, we can recycle these at the end of the day, uh, less dishes, of course. But, um, you know, also, this is a great way for, like, if you got, you know, a couple hungry kids or a bunch of hungry kids, you make up a big batch like this, throw some things out, give them some cups, and then you do cups of macaroni and cheese or something. So. That's, that's kind of fun. Again, it's like a mac and cheese bar, you know, so. All right, so I'm doing my pork and that. kimchi. We're gonna go with a little bit of this cheese, extra yeah, cheesy yeah, cheese. Load up some. We're gonna sprinkle some bacon in there. I think actually I'm gonna go breakfast sausage, caramelized onion, and blue cheese. I think that would be Breakfast sausage good. sounds awesome. Yeah. Can you toss me my garlic? You betcha. You ready? Let's go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's nerve wracking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take this roasted garlic and just kind of mash it up. I have gloved hands, so I can mash it up with my fingers. Yeah, and that, and that roasted garlic, that's something we need to try on on here. And yeah, we can do a little demo on that sometime. Show you all how to do that because, uh, yeah, that's a really cool little trick to do with roasted Really garlic. easy. And, like, you know, when you buy the, uh, the big bag of peeled garlic, which I buy peeled garlic because I hate peeling garlic. Although, you have that cool peeler. Yeah. But fun. sometimes for ease, I just buy that bag of peeled garlic, and then I use one little thing in there, and then I end up having all this extra that, you know, I have no idea what to do with, and I don't yeah. eat that much garlic. I mean, I love garlic, but... Yeah. Um, and so it's it's a nice way to use up the rest of that, and then it preserves it. It lasts for a really long time, then you have garlic oil, too. Yeah, and the stuff, if you put it into a, uh, you know, like a sandwich or a quart size Ziploc baggie, um, flatten it out, you can you can actually put it in your freezer and you can freeze that roasted garlic puree then or you know chunks of roasted garlic and then whenever you need them you pull them out of the freezer, a couple minutes they're thawed and um, uh, you know like Jimmy said you know they'll they'll uh, last quite a long time so, so it's fun. Alright I'm going to throw some pesto into this one. I've got some avocado I'm going to do some pesto here with the avocado. That would be good, I think. Alright. Yep, I'm going to get going. i got my roasted garlic. Alright. That cleaned up there. Got my bacon. The great thing about doing this down here, though, Jimmy, is that we don't have to clean up the kitchen at home today. <laughs> well, yeah, we do have to, we have to clean up one Well, kitchen. we do have to clean up this kitchen, of course, yes. But, at least my wife can watch from the inside the house. From the inside the house, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, here, I'll slide this on down to you. All right, there we go. Oh, man, you look great down there. All right, so I've got my sausage, breakfast sausage and caramelized onion here. All right, we'll throw some of that in there. Okay, there's that one. And we'll go with our avocado pesto here. Okay. Oh yeah. Still staying nice and creamy there. Okay. And the other good thing is I get to take some of this home now. I know. This is. I finally get you, to taste you it. You finally get to taste the oh. food we make. Hold on. All right. Got to figure out how to eat under these things. This is yeah. what our students are going to have to do in class, too. Yep. These are uh, 
students are going to have to wear them. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Take a little bit of this fried chilies and oil with peanuts. <laughs> Put a little dab on that on top. Make sure we get some peanuts in there. Oh, man. And then. All right. So let's get some comments real quick. Uh, okay. Diane said we need to deliver. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Girato Braun. Apologies if I didn't get that right. Um, yeah, it, this is great for families. Um, and like I said, you could just, whatever someone's favorite meal was from earlier in the week, and there's a little bit of leftover, they can take that flavor and add it to the mac and cheese. Absolutely. Um, oh, but Brooke is watching from Robbie's house. My wife Brooke is watching from Robbie's house anyways. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Sandy Owens, thank you, looking good. Thank you, thank you everybody for joining us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm. Oh man, that's nice and creamy. Here's a little bit of salt there, but. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go for my bacon one. Okay, so I've got the avocado pesto one here. Mm -hmm. Bacon. Yeah, and Berta, you'll, you'll get some of this later tonight. Mm. Yeah, all right. Mm. Uh-oh. All right, this is the 2020 struggle of face shield. Yeah. But we wanted to make sure you guys could see our faces. Yeah. So we wanted to bring these guys in and face mask. Okay. Oh, one of my favorite combinations here, fried chilies and oil with mac and cheese. Oh, fried chilies. Mm, man. Where's my kimchi? There you go. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. Gosh, that's good. Mm. Mm. I might have to add some of those fried chilies into this mac and cheese. Oh, that is delicious. And you know, you might be looking at the, like the kimchi, the mac and cheese, but I'm telling you, that is a great, great combination. Yeah, because you get this, you get the sour and that tartness, yeah. and then the spice and everything. It's really good. Yeah, I think that creaminess really goes well with it. I think. All right, and I got the sausage and caramelized onion here. Oh man, I'm gonna have to, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can't have to try that one. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so let's let's review again. Yeah. Again, the, the three-part mac and cheese. I think you need to step this way into the frame. Three-part mac and cheese with sodium citrate. And we got our six feet there. Good. Um, whatever liquid. I do like the beer. The beer is actually a good one if you're doing a beer cheese. You know, we did a beer cheese sauce for a big event in the fall. We put it on top of some small sliders and man he was a big hit yeah and our, our students love making a giant vet of this cheese sauce yeah. they're just like really we just dumped this cheese in there we did five gallons in a steam jacket kettle about this big oh yeah um, it was really fun for the students it was a, kind of a cool recipe a little science uh, lesson for them yeah uh, but so the sodium citrate the liquid and the cheese and uh, let's talk about some of the cheeses that you've used for this like i've used yeah, cheddar absolutely. white cheddar um i've done like a heavy cream with some Parmesan cheese. Oh, you know, it's like an Alfredo. Like an Alfredo or something, um, sure. I've also just taken a bunch of leftover cheeses. Um, you know, back when we used to have lots of people over at our house, mm -hmm. we would have a, a cheese board and whatever leftover cheese I put through the shredder in my food processor and then just use that up. Um, and you get some really cool flavors out of that. Definitely. Um, sometimes a little funky, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I kind of like envision like a, like some, shredded Gruyere or something like that. Uh, if you'd have that Gruyere mac and cheese with caramelized onions and then, you know, maybe some uh, toasted breadcrumbs on top, you get kind of like a French onion, you know, French onion soup mac and cheese, if you will. So uh, it's kind of a different flavor there, but uh, you know, fresh herb or something. But um, yeah, that cheese combination sounds great. But, you know, I think any kind of, any good melting cheese, um, you know, will definitely work well. Um, I don't know that I would try this with a brie. I don't know what. Have you ever tried it with a brie? So one of, one of the mixes that they had had a little bit of brie. Okay. Um, and it was actually nice because it kind of gave it like a little bit of pungency. I cut the the rind off, so it was okay. all just the inside. Okay. Um, but it gave it like a really nice, good, creamy flavor. Um, I think we ended up doing that on some zucchini noodles, which oh, turned out really good. Really good. Yeah. Um, just throw a little herb de Provence in there. Oh and, yeah. And get a get a nice good flavor going there. Absolutely. Oh. You bet. Do some maybe some uh, goat cheese too with uh, maybe some roasted tomatoes or something like that. Maybe a little bit of basil, um, you know. So 
So. All right. Well, anybody? Does anybody have any questions? I know this is a little bit of a quick one. Uh, let's talk about next week, though. Yeah. Uh, so uh, next week, Mr. Webb is going to be gone. So uh, I'll be flying solo at my house again. Um, but next Wednesday, we're going to be playing with some hot dogs. So we'll figure out. We'll play. You know, do. Um, you know, a couple variations on some hot dogs will kind of kick them up a bit and make them a little gourmet, if you will. But uh, you know, using ingredients that you can easily find at a yeah. you know, at your local grocery store, of course. But yeah, and we'll talk. I'll get you that recipe for the snoring dog. That's one of my personal favorites. Definitely, yeah. Uh, we, if Jeff Cook is out there listening, we're gonna make a snoring dog. Oh boy. Maybe if yeah. you want to. <laughs> we'll try. But it's a bacon wrapped hot dog with some bracho beans and. Um, you can do an avocado sauce, or I do a wasakaka sauce, which I'll get to you, which is a um, Venezuelan uh, green okay. sauce, and um, it's usually a little bit of pico and then a little cotija. Okay. A lot of special ingredients. So, may, yeah. I know you. I know you usually have cotija though. So yeah, definitely, definitely. But again, you know, we're kind of going beyond just the mustard and ketchup and relish on a hot dog next week. So we're, we'll play with those a little bit and. You know, we like to, it's something we like to do, right? We like to play with our foods and we like to take, you know, macaroni and cheese and turn it into something, you know, or add some ingredients to it to kind of kick it up a little bit. Um, and that's what we'll do with the hot dogs next week. So if anybody out there listening and you want to, you know, you have a something you'd like to pair with a hot dog, don't be afraid to let us know. Shout yeah, let out. Us. Yeah. We can post up in the comments if you got a really cool yeah. hot dog that you know it's kind of obscure or kind of fun and super easy way to do it. Oh, but we're so we're doing it because it's National Hot Dog Day, also. Um, and just so everybody knows, today is National Mac and Cheese Day too. Oh, it is. So okay, cool. You know, yeah. we're celebrating National Mac and Cheese Day by making some really fun mac and cheese. Very cool. All Very right. Good. And yeah, so thank you for joining us on Tuesday. Uh, I know we normally do this on Wednesday, so let us know if Tuesday works out for you. Um, I think we're going to try to stick to the Wednesdays unless we have different things going on. Um, we've moved to today because it's National Mac and Cheese Day, and we just want to, you know, get that going. Yeah. Um, but if you actually, I think next Wednesday is the hot dog. Day. Yeah, next Wednesday is the hot yeah. dog day, so it'll be on yeah. a Wednesday. Yeah. So, all right, well. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to have to hang you here for a minute while I run around and shut down the stream. But yeah. anything else? Any last words? I uh, don't think I can think of anything. No. But thanks again, y'all, for joining us again. Um, it's always fun. And uh, we'll look forward to, to uh, chatting with y'all next week. So until then, we'll see you later. <laughs>